Kia ora guys, Michelle here and welcome back to my channel. You might remember a few weeks ago I posted a video on how to get the perfect pitch on your duplex tent every single time. If you haven't already seen that video please go ahead and check it out, I will link it for you up here. In that video I covered off exactly how to get that perfect pitch in optimal weather conditions and I promised you that I would be making a video about how to pitch the duplex in windy weather conditions so that is what I'm going to cover in this video here today. Now take a look around, we don't have a particularly windy day here today whilst I am making this video for you, but nevertheless I am going to show you the methodology, the thought process and exactly how I set up my duplex tent when I think I am going to have to deal with high wind or adverse weather. Now complete disclaimer here and if you've watched my Te Araroa through hike vlog series which again I will link for you up here, you'll know that there weren't actually that many days on my through hike of Te Araroa's North Island where I had to pitch my tent in windy or wet conditions. I was very lucky with the weather that I experienced all the way down the length of the North Island. But having said that it is very important to know how to pitch your tent in those conditions and in my upcoming through hike of the South Island portion of Te Araroa I am expecting to have to experience very windy conditions as I am traversing down the Southern Alps. So this video will be helpful not only for me when I'm doing that but also hopefully for you guys who are planning on doing something similar with your duplex tent in the future. So in that original video that I posted about how to perfectly pitch the duplex tent the very first thing that I started off with was the height that you need to set your trekking poles to. Now if you are pitching your duplex in perfect or optimal weather conditions I tend to go with a rule of thumb of setting my trekking poles to about 115 centimeters but if you're pitching in windy conditions it is very important to get your trekking poles set to a lower height than that so I'm going to set both of my trekking poles to 110 centimeters. That allows my tent to be sitting a lot closer to the ground which in turn of course means that not as much wind can get up and under inside the tent and potentially carry it away. So I'm going to go ahead and set both of my trekking poles to 110 centimeters. Alright so that is 110 centimeters on both of my trekking poles and now we're going to get out the tent and start to pitch it. So what you will know of course about the duplex tent is one of the biggest reasons why people choose to go with this tent over some of the others on the market is because of how lightweight it is. Now this is all well and good if you are pitching it on a very nice weather day but if you are trying to pitch it in high wind conditions that lightness can become a little bit of a problem. More than one time on the trail and in using my tent since then I've become incredibly frustrated by the fact that my tent will blow away while I'm trying to pitch it or it just won't stay in one place so that I can pitch it properly. So in this video I'm going to be showing you exactly how to overcome that and that starts with how the tent has been constructed itself. Now z -Packs being the company that they are they have thought of everything when they constructed this tent and that includes constructing it specifically with two storm doors facing on one side of the tent so that you can pitch it into the wind on adverse weather condition days. Now one thing that I didn't realize until just recently in fact until I was doing some research for this video was that they have helped hikers out in identifying exactly which doors are the storm doors by putting their z -Packs label on the side of the tent that you should pitch into the wind. This of course helps hikers identify very quickly which side the storm doors are on and just makes that process of pitching the tent quickly in those adverse weather conditions so much easier. Now for the purposes of this video I'm going to be pretending that the wind today is coming from this direction here so I'm going to be pitching my storm doors facing into the wind so facing in this direction. So as I mentioned I'm pretending that the prevailing wind is going to be coming from this direction here so I'm going to unravel my tent and find out what side those storm doors are on and place them into that direction. Now what I'm going to do before I even go too much further is grab my tent stakes and I'm going to put two of them straight away into my pocket and I'm going to keep two of them out handy. This is just going to help me to pitch the tent a little bit more efficiently when it comes to putting it up in that strong wind. So I'm looking for the labels on the tent. They're not on this end, so they must be up this end here. 
So I've got my two Z-Packs labels down in this corner here and I'm going to get these two corners staked out first and again that's because they are facing into the prevailing wind and it means that if I'm staking these two corners out the wind is rustling this way and that means that hopefully that side of the tent will stay put while I'm trying to pitch it. Now I want to show you just quickly exactly what I'm doing with the guy lines on each of these corners as I'm pitching them. Now because again we're pitching these into windy conditions, what I'm trying to do is get this tent sitting as close to the ground as possible. So instead of having those guy lines all the way out as I showed you in that original video of how to get the perfect pitch, instead this time around I'm going to first of all shorten the guy lines to half of their length. So I'm still using that same principle that I showed you in the first video which is that I am pitching my guy lines at a 45 degree angle to where my tent pole is going to create the apex of the tent and I'm just going to pitch it relatively loosely again at the moment. Don't forget the purpose of this to start with is just to get the tent secured in the ground. We're going to make a few little adjustments a little bit later on. Alright so now I have those two storm doors pitched out, the very next thing that I'm going to do which differs substantially from how to perfectly pitch the tent in optimal conditions is start to put my trekking poles in. So I'm going to grab one of my poles and put it straight up into the cup there. I'm going to align it roughly with the seam that runs down the mesh door. I'm going to shorten the guy line up. And I'm just going to get it very roughly pitched out. This is where having those um, tent stakes in your pocket makes things just a little bit easier. So we're just pitching this out roughly at this point. Get that put as close into the ground as you can. And don't forget I am still putting those um, tent stakes into the ground on that 45 degree angle. That's going to make it a lot stronger in those windy conditions. Now I've got that one in, I'm going to go the other side and put this other trekking pole in too. Turns out my wind is actually coming from the other direction today, which is very handy. <laughs> All right, so now I have my two trekking poles pitched and I made sure that I have a nice taut line along the ridge line there. And you can see that this is relatively stable even in those windy conditions. Again, the idea is that the wind will be coming from this direction and creating a little bit more stability as well. So before that wind has a too much of a chance to take hold, I'm going to go ahead and pitch out the other two corners using the same process I've just used on these two corners here. Alright, so I've got my other two corners pitched out now. I'm just going to pitch out each of the two sets of doors as well. That's going to make things a little bit easier as we go forward and make those final adjustments. Okay, so here's just a quick walk around of the tent in its original pitch form. You can see there's still some adjustments and things that need to be done, but mostly speaking, it is pretty well pitched. It just needs a few little corners and things tightened up. This side is looking relatively good, so it's just this one corner over on this side. So all I'm going to do is come around to this side here basically and I'm going to get right down and I'm just going to pull my guy line a little bit more taut just so that I have now got a nice taut pitch on this side of the tent and I'm going to carry on going all the way around just making those little adjustments. Alright so now I have all of the main guy lines pitched out. The very last thing that I'm going to do is pitch out the two guy lines on the actual main walls of the tent as well and again that's just to give it a little bit more stability in those high wind conditions. Alright and that is pretty much the last adjustment that you need to make on this tent to pitch it perfectly for those windy conditions. So let's just take one final walk around of the tent and I'm going to show you exactly what I've done. Alright so as you can see in general what you'll notice about this particular pitch of the tent is how much closer to the ground it is sitting. So instead of the normal pitch that you'll have seen in the other video there's not much of a gap on the underside of the tent and that's just to minimize the amount of wind that can get under and into the inside of the tent and potentially catch so that your tent ends up going flying off away from you. Now the other thing that you'll notice as we walk around this tent is that even though 
I have pitched it relatively taut. It's got a decent amount of tension. I haven't put as much tension on the tent this time around as I did for the perfect pitch. And that's because you want to make sure there is a little bit of extra give in the tent, a little bit of extra room to move. So for example, on this corner in particular, you'll see there's a little bit more give there. Um, but on this storm door, for example, there's probably too much give. So I'd need to tighten this up a little bit more. You just want it taut, but you don't want it absolutely bursting at the seams. The other thing that you'll notice is just how much closer these tent stakes are to the actual corner of the tent. So in most cases, I'm sitting at probably a third of the length of the guy line in relation to what the rest of the guy line is. So if we look at this sideways, this is about a third of the total length of that guy line there. And also you'll notice that I am pitching my tent stakes basically in as close to the ground as I can reasonably get them. You do want a little bit of the tent stakes sticking out of the ground because it gives it a little bit more stability, but you don't want too much out of the ground because in those high wind conditions, that's just gonna potentially pull the stake out of the ground. And that is especially important for all the stakes that you have on the storm door side of the tent. All right guys, so there you have it. In my opinion, this is the best way to pitch the duplex tent in those adverse weather conditions and specifically in windy weather conditions. Don't forget the principle that we have operated by here is to try and get the tent down as close to the ground as possible. And why? Well, the reason for that is to make sure that there's no extra possibility for wind to get up and underneath the inside of the tent here, creating more pressure and tension on the inside, which could result in guy lines being pulled out of the ground and potentially even losing your tent. The closer pitch to the ground does of course mean that that bathtub floor is sitting a lot closer to the ground than it would be on the optimal pitch that I talked about in my last video. And that has the added advantage of giving you a little bit more extra floor space on the inside of the tent. But it does also have the disadvantage of bringing the tent and the bathtub closer to the floor um, which might result in additional splashback on rainy days on the trail. On those rainier days though I would suggest that you pitch the tent even closer to the ground and bring in all four of those tent stakes just that little bit extra and that's going to minimize the amount of rain that can get up and under and onto the inside of your tent. Now if it's not raining the fact that it is a windy day outside doesn't mean that you can't still benefit from some added ventilation on the inside of your tent and if you've pitched it properly the way that I've showed you in this video with your storm doors angled into the prevailing wind it should mean that you can completely open up these two storm doors at the back here and allow yourself a little bit of extra ventilation through. In fact this tent is so versatile that you could opt to have just one of the storm doors open to give a little bit more ventilation or you could even pitch it and have both of the storm doors open for that little bit of extra ventilation on those windy nights as well. And even if it's not a crazily windy night on those days on the trail where you just have a little breath of wind and it's just cold enough or just strong enough to disturb you while you're sleeping. You can still pitch your storm doors like this faced into the prevailing wind and have one of these back doors open for ventilation and still get yourself a good night's sleep. I hope that you guys have found this video really helpful and it's given you some tips and tricks of how to pitch your duplex tent in those windy or wet conditions. Now if you're a more experienced hiker and you've put a few more kilometers onto your duplex tent than I have and especially ones in those windy and wet conditions and you feel like you've got comments that you'd like to add to anything that I've said in this video please go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below and help another hiker out. Next week I am going to be covering everything that you need to know about navigation on Te Araroa, so make sure that you stick around for that. Otherwise please take care and stay safe out there.